For weeks and weeks, the disciples have been following Jesus around the outskirts of the Lake of Galilee. But today, Jesus leads Peter, James and John away from the crowds, up a high mountain, so that he can be alone with them. His face is transfigured with a divine light, and he leads them into the presence of God the Father, whose face is too beautiful and too holy to be seen, whose voice points them back to his beloved Son, urging them to follow him in faith and obedience. Now, the story of the Transfiguration is not, obviously, a story about confession. But I want to use it to help us to understand this wonderful gift and to make the connection for us this Lent. Because the sacrament of confession is the same journey that the three disciples make. It's about following the Lord away from the crowds, it's about bringing our lives into his light so that we can be reconciled with the Father and hear the Father's voice in a new and a personal way. Because at one level, confession is something very personal. It's about your friendship with the Lord and his love for you and yours for him. There is a spiritual peace that God wants to give you that you can only find by going to confession. Think of all the different things that you worry about in an average week. Just think about some of the things you brought to Mass with you this morning. Think of the different ways that you try to find peace and happiness. Think of the different things that you spend your time and money on. They may be good things, they may be important things, but nothing will ever bring you true peace and happiness if you are not at peace with God. Confession is the fundamental way that we discover that peace after baptism. We bring our lives into his light, just as the disciples do in this story. We stop pretending. We admit our mistakes and confess our sins. And this honesty allows his mercy to touch us. We're set free to make a new start and live a new life. So confession is something very personal and very powerful. At another level, however, confession, and this is true for every sacrament, is an apocalyptic event. Now what on earth is he talking about? Well an apocalypse in Greek thought is an uncovering, a revelation. It's when you open the curtain and see the deeper reality behind as the disciples did on top of the mountain. In the Christian apocalyptic worldview we are in the middle of a cosmic drama that stretches from the beginning of creation to the end of time. This is the battle between good and evil, between sin and salvation, between light and darkness. A battle which, never forget this, Christ has already won, but whose consequences are still unfolding in history and in our lives. Most of the time we're not aware of this drama, because it's taking place on a spiritual plane and we are so caught up in the everyday concerns of life. But don't kid yourself. Your life, however ordinary it seems, has a profound meaning. Your actions and choices, especially your moral choices, have immense significance. They are part of a great plan of salvation. Going to confession reminds us of this. It gives us the bigger picture. We see the tragedy of sin, which is to turn away from God and undermine his plans. 
we see the beauty of forgiveness, which is to share in the divine life of the Holy Spirit. And we see the deepest meaning of our vocation, which is to bring Christ's own healing and love into the lives of those we know and lead them to the Father and ultimately to heaven. Many of you here have not been to confession for a long time, for many months or even for many years. Now I'm not judging you. Don't have a guilt trip. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be wonderful to go to confession this Lent? But there is probably something that's been holding you back. It might be a recurring thing. What is it honestly that has stopped you coming to confession over the last few months or years? It might be fear, embarrassment, not knowing what to say, not knowing how to change, not having the time, not having the inclination, or even thinking that your sin is too big for God to forgive. Part of me wants to go through each of these anxieties like a loving pastor and reassure you that it's going to be okay. So don't be afraid. God loves you and he will help you. And yes, you need to be brave. Don't be embarrassed. God knows what's happened to you already. And the priest isn't there to judge or condemn you, but simply to show you God's mercy. Don't worry if you're unsure how to go or what to say or how to sort out your life afterwards. The priest will support you and the Holy Spirit, even more importantly, will guide you as you move forward. Confession isn't about solving everything in the future. It's about starting the future. And whatever you do, don't believe the lie that your sin is bigger than God's mercy. There is nothing that cannot be brought to confession. And in fact, it might sound strange this, the bigger the sin, the easier it is for God and the priest to forgive it, because there is even more joy in the forgiving. So these are my possible pastoral sensitive responses. But another part of me, when I hear your worries, is just too impatient to go through every possible objection and anxiety. And I just want to say, please come to confession. Trust me. Trust the church. Whatever is holding you back, ignore it. Step around it. It's a lie. It's not from the Lord. You know when you get an email and you have a suspicion that it might have a virus in it that's going to destroy your computer and your whole life. What's the one thing you must never do with that email? Open it and read it. Instead, you just delete it. And it's the same when that thought comes into your mind when Mass finishes and it says to you, look, they need to go to confession, but you don't need to because of this. And when that thought comes into your mind, don't stop and analyse and argue with it. Just delete it. And to encourage yourself, just think about the gifts that God wishes to give you through confession, which we can hardly begin to comprehend. And ask yourself, how could I not want this? Because it's far, far more than just being forgiven. It is, of course, the forgiveness of your sins. But it's also the restoration of lost innocence and purity of heart. It is the healing of past wounds, the wounds of sin that you have caused for others and even that they have caused to you. The spiritual peace that comes from being reconciled to God and to his church and to your neighbour. The grace to live a life of holiness in the future. 
and many people don't know this, the very special grace to grow in those areas that you have confessed. And even more, the grace to discover and live your true vocation because you've let yourself enter into this apocalyptic drama of salvation once more. <coughs> Instead of hiding and pretending, you are ready to start again. Maybe you've heard a little bit too much from me. So let me finish with some words from someone called Kate. Two weeks ago, I was at a retreat, as some of you remember, for some young people in Leeds. And some of the participants posted their reflections online afterwards to encourage one another. This was on a public website. So these words were posted by Kate. It's very personal, but she wrote it in public, so I feel I can read it out to you now. It's much better for you to hear this from a young person like yourself than from a priest. So let me give the last word to her. And these are her comments, word for word. I haven't made any of this up. She writes this paragraph. I experienced something so wonderful this weekend. I was at a reconciliation and healing service. Confession was going on. Now, I hadn't been to confession for a number of years because of fear of what the priest and Jesus would think of me. I wanted to overcome that fear, so I made the brave decision to go to confession. Over the years, I have always tried to be perfect, but I was reminded in confession of the words of Jesus. I came not to call the virtuous, but sinners. This was Jesus' way of saying to me, I don't expect you to be perfect. I felt Jesus speak to my heart, and he said, I love you, and I forgive you. Go in peace. When I came out, I felt like the world had been lifted off my shoulders. This is how God speaks to your heart. All we have to do is listen. If there is anyone who has not been to confession, I really would urge you to go and allow God to speak to your heart and give him the chance to stretch out his hand and touch you. I was afraid, but I'm not anymore. <laughs>